Okay. Welcome to the Kol HaRuach Messianic Fellowship, which means Voice of the Spirit, uh, and Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Hallelujah. Allah, I thank you, Lord, for uh, this teaching. I thank you, Lord, for the worship. Lord, I know, Lord, that we are going to so be celebrating, Abba. Lord, we're going to so be excited all the time in your glory, Lord. I ask for nothing in the city of El Paso will hold back your glory when it comes. Lord, let this be counted among the cities where your glory is shining the greatest. Abba, I ask, Lord, for you to remove religion from the earth. Abba, I ask, Lord, for you to put an end to denominations, put an end to arguments. Yes, Father. That there will be a people, Lord, as it says, one doctrine, one faith, Abba. That we truly love each other, Lord, and that the world would see that Yeshua was sent. Hallelujah. Abba, I thank you, Lord, though Israel was a troublesome group, our people, Lord, complained a lot. And there's been a lot of death in these past portions, Abba. But, Lord, we're moving on. And 38 years have now passed in this, in this portion, Abba. And the promised land is getting ever so closer. And the inheritance is getting ever so nearer. Amen. Abba, I ask, Lord, that all of us can enter into that inheritance, that blessing, Abba. That great time, Lord, that you have promised. That now your prophets are saying is even closer, Amen. Lord. Even at the door, even yes, the beginning Lord. of it, Amen. is maybe within a week or two, Abba. And that we see everything turn around, Abba. And no more will the enemy have the laugh, or will the enemy have control. But he will be afraid of the righteous people that they are about to rise up in your glory. Hallelujah. Because there's no other way we can be effective for your kingdom, except when we shine and reflect Yeshua, the light. When we reflect the sun as a bride, Lord, ready for the groom. Hallelujah. Uh, we're in Numbers 22.2. Should be easier in Numbers 22.2. And it goes all the way to 25.9. And the hop Torah for this portion is Micah 5, 6 to 6, 8. Okay. The portion is called Balak. Okay. I will tell you this. No, I shouldn't say this. I was going to use one of these slurs of this generation. You know, the whole lives matter thing? Mm. But I don't think it fits. So I won't drop that. <laughs> I'll just say, Balak, Balak, his words matter. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He saw Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorite. Frightened was Moab of the people exceedingly because numerous they were, and disgusted was Moab because of the children of Israel. Okay, from these past portions, we've seen Israel defeated Ad, king of Ashan, and Sichon, king of the Amorites. They were giants. And they began to, they were about to begin to take the land. And Moab, they have to go near Moab. They weren't supposed to take Moab. But they were afraid because they had a God with them. Israel wasn't just a traveling group of warriors. It's now 38 years since Israel defeated the Egyptians. But the news of that was still going around the world at that time. They, the sea opened up and their God calls them the cross on dry land. And they destroyed Egypt. 38 years later, and I guess Egypt still, still hadn't recovered from that. Amen. Okay? Even 38 years after the bombing, bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, there was some semblance of life there. We don't know what happened in Egypt, but they definitely, no, Egypt was not the king and capital of the world anymore. 
Okay, but the whole, all the nations of the of the Middle Eastern world were afraid of Israel. Not just because of Israel, but because the God of Israel was with them. Right. Amen. He was a cloud by day and a fire by night. Amen. And they were encased in a cloud. Amen. And the cloud was at their feet, so their shoes did not wear out. Hallelujah. That wherever they walked, if there was rough ground, it was made smooth. Amen. Because of the glory that was in front of them. It was changing the ground as they walked and making it a smooth path. Amen. Amen. Everywhere they went. And they were frightened when they looked at, at this group of people and God as the warrior that led them. Okay. So Balak's frightened. God said he wasn't going to go after Moab. But God asked Moab, Will you let us go around you? But he said no. So they got on God's bad side. But he still wasn't going to go in there. Because it wasn't what he wanted the people to conquer. Okay? So he saw Balak, son of Zippor, all that Israel had done. And they were frightened. And they were disgusting. Now let me give you another meaning to frightened and disgusting. Okay? Uh, first of all, the name of Balak means devastated, to lay waste. And his father was named Zippor, which means to a, a sparrow, it also means a bird or a fowl. It also means to depart early. So what does it mean? Together, him and his father, Balak and his father, the king of Moab, their names mean run to do evil. Run quickly to do evil, to devastate, to destroy. So what was he doing? Israel was nearby, so he was running quickly to destroy them. Okay, so look, look at the bottom of page one of your notes. Okay, frightened was not. The word means gore. That means they were like, they were abiding, but it's more than abiding. They were gathering together in trouble and great fear. Okay. Disgusted was Moab. You know what the word means? The word is kutz. And it means to be grieved, to loathe. A sickening dread, great fear fell upon our enemies. This is what we're going to see. Great fear is going to fall upon our enemies. You watch. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to see the word kutz. If you take away the vav, the middle letter, Josh, you see it up there? There's a kutz. It's a kuf. A love and a tzaddik. Can you enlarge it real quick a second? Do you see it? If you remove that middle letter, the vav, it's just the word kets. That's a word meaning the end. Meaning they came to their end. They came to the end. They were so fearful that it was like they were peeing in their pants. It was over. Okay? Amen. Amen. Okay, so they came to the end of themselves. God made them feel like they were at their end. And you know what? That's whoops, that's the kind of fear that that is going we're gonna to do to the enemy soon. Amen. We are gonna frighten them. Listen, we've been we have not lived in the time of the book of Acts. We weren't there, we read about it. But we weren't there. And yes, we hear miracles happening in this part of the world, in that part of the world. They're raising dead over here. They're, they're, you know, they're causing people to get healed and their arms to grow out. But we haven't seen this on a wide scale in the United States. Mm -hmm. But we are about to. Woo! Okay. And not only that, but the authority we have to cast out demons. Listen, they have caused such a foulness such a wretchedness in the eyes of God. The demons, he is so angry with them, he is going to make the smallest of us cause the demons to run. Amen. I'm telling you, this is about to happen. Yes, sir. With Amen. faith. You better rise up in your faith. Amen. Because I'm telling you, what's about to happen, the demons are frightened of what the bride is going to become. Amen. Okay, and they are going to run. Yes, Lord. They are not going to be around. It's not going to be like in the movie The Chosen, where a demon comes up and 
everybody's like running and someone takes some kind of thing to, to hit, hit the person with who has a demon. But Yeshua comes along and he casts it out or yes. says to the legion, get out, you know, and go to the pigs or whatever, okay? Now we are going to have such an authority. And, and the demons know this and the enemy knows this. And we are going to put them into such cats, such fear. It's not going to be us. It's going to be the spirit of the Lord in us. Amen. His life. There's just nothing in us. All of our goodness is from Him. Amen. Okay. That's what's coming. And Amen. that's the kind of fear that God would use Israel to, to, to show to Moab. Okay. Now here's God. He's saying, okay, you think you can mock me. Okay. I'm going to show you my bride. I'm going to show you my bride. And you will regret that you mock me. God is made a covenant with Israel. He was his betrothed at Mount Sinai. Like we are his betrothed today in, in addition to Israel. Amen. But the betrothed of God back then was Israel. That was his bride. Okay, And he... He says, I'm going to show you my bride now. <laughs> I'm going to show up. God isn't to show and tell. And he is going to say to you, all of you out, out here, if you're willing to walk by faith and not by sight, Amen. he is going to make you a fearful thing before the enemy. He, he's going to make, they're going to be frightened of you. The enemy is going to be frightened of you. Okay. This is our calling because we are a bride like Israel. He's going to show us off. Now, he's not showing us off for us, but for his glory. He is going to get the glory. And if you want it, guess what? You're not going to show off. He's not going to share his glory with another person. Yes, he's going to have a president. It's after his heart. as the President Trump. Okay. But it's not because... Of President Trump. It's because of God's calling upon him because God is raising up a man that's going to allow God to do what he wants to do with this Amen. nation. Amen. We need someone to allow God to do it that will not hinder. Amen. And if we have a president who will do that. Okay? It's not in the whisperer in Washington, D.C. right now. The one who was whispering the other day. Sound like a snake to take the yes, 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 yes. The Biden snake. Yes. God has a president after his heart, a Solomon in the wings. Okay. Adonijah, Adoniah, or some people say in, in the English Adonijah. He's he was made king, but he was he wasn't supposed to be a king. He was supposed to be Solomon. God's about to raise up Solomon. Adonijah has, it's, it's enough, God's saying. You know? Amen. The fury has come in my face. Yeah. And I believe this is it. I don't think we have very much longer. I think God is going to, you know, I know that there are prophets out there that are saying something's going to happen on July 4th. I, I really don't like date setting because it hasn't been very good lately. <laughs> but, you know, enough of the prophets of God are seeing something, so I believe. I believe something is going to begin to change on the day of our independence. Amen. What were we getting independence from? Tyranny. Amen. Satanic oh, tyranny of Amen. England. Of the king and queen of England. Okay. Well, now it's time. And, and also, by the way, those coming out of Spain in 1492 were getting freedom from, from, uh, uh, from the persecution. The Jews were the being Inquisition. persecuted, the Spanish Inquisition. Yeah, that's right. Okay, Inquisition. and they were running from Ferdinand and uh, Isabella. Isabella. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, the Nina, the Santa Maria. The Nina, the Santa Maria. The Nina, the Santa, Santa Maria. Yeah. They discovered America. That was the beginning. And then later, of course, uh, we have we have the, they're coming into the, the new land, the land of the United States. I didn't mean for this to be a history lesson. But this applies very much. We have enemies, and they're trying to make war on us, like Balak. So let's move on. There's a guy named Bill. Uh, let's read about him. In, in, in chapter Numbers, chapter 22, four, starting in verse 4. Moab said to the elders of Midian, 
Now, the congregation, that's Israel, will lick up all of our surroundings as an ox licks up the greenery of the field. And Balak, son of Tzippor, was king of Moab at that time. He sent messengers to Bil'am, son of Beor, to Petor, which is near the river to the land of the members of his people to invite him to saying, indeed, a people has come out of Egypt. Indeed, they have covered the face of the earth and they are camped opposite of me. So now come, please, and curse for me this people for powerful are they more than me. Perhaps I will be able to strike them and I will drive them from the land for I know that he whom you bless is blessed. And whom you curse is cursed. They went, the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian went with magical devices. Pay attention to that. Yeah, magical devices in their hands. And they came to Bilam and they spoke to him the words of Balak. Okay, let's stop right there for now. Okay. Um, the word Bilam. The word Bilam literally means not of the people. Okay? And its root word also means to swallow up in gulf. It, a part of his name means to grow dark. So it's a man who engulfs, who swallows up, who brings darkness. Okay? It was a son of Beor, and his father's name, Bilam's father's name, literally means burning. Okay? Okay, and he lived in a place called Petor. Okay, so let's look at this. The city Petor. Do you know what it says in the Hebrew? I gotta find the spot real quick. Um, what? Where was the verse that had the name of it? Uh, it's right where it says son of Beor. Um, what verse? Uh, four. 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 Oh, five. Five. Sorry. Five. Okay. He sent messengers to Bil um, the son of Beor, to Petor. You know what it says in the Hebrew? Petorah. You know what the Torah is? It's the word of God, right? Mm -hmm. But yet the meaning of this word leaves off the hay. And it's the word Petor which means soothsayer. Someone that manipulates. Someone that uses their tongue, manipulates, usually in an evil direction, with their tongue. But what are they manipulating? The word there, petora, the word pay is they have a tongue. It's the mouth. The mouth is misusing the word of God. That's what it means. The city where he's from, which means soothsayer, is a mouth of someone misusing the word of God. And 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 they they obviously thought, okay, this man used to be used to bless or curse people. And he succeeded because of the power of the tongue. Okay? This is really important to understand. It says he used magical devices, and I was thrown off a little bit by this when I was studying. Look at the bottom of your notes on page uh, on page three. The word for magical devices is kesem, but the root word of it is kasam. And I kept thinking, have you ever heard of kasam rockets? Yes. That's what the Hamas, the terrorist group. Hamas, by the way, means terror. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, so so. Uh, it's like, so the terrorists, they call themselves Palestinians, but there is no such thing, okay? Uh, they are actually Arabs, Jordanian Arabs that were placed there long ago, and they took a claim to the land and called themselves Palestinians. Okay, now, aside from that, I don't want to get into that. But these terrorists there, the Hamas, they fire off these Qassam rockets to attack Israel. But back then, that's a, Qassam is an Arabic word, okay? And this is a Hebrew word, and it means to practice divination, okay? Now, the Arab word Qassam is the name of the rockets used to attack Eretz Israel to kill Israelis. 
Isn't it interesting that the Hebrew word kasam was what the ambassadors of Balak wanted to kill the first Israelis with? Okay. Uh, some commentaries say this may be, this might be where black magic came from. Balak magic. Balak magic. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I'm just telling you this. This is something sort of, what's a revelatory thing. It's not black magic, it's Balak magic. That's good. Because it's Kassam rockets. It's Kassam. That's the devices, okay? A little cute little revelation of what should be the tweet. Okay. But it's like, isn't it interesting that they want to work with Israel? They haven't worked with Israel because Israel has today the Iron Dome. Okay? But back then, they had God with a rod of iron. Amen. Okay? Amen. With a cloud of glory. Okay? So, Kassam doesn't work back then and now. Amen. Okay? And though he misuses the word of God, Petorah, he comes from the land of the misuse and the abuse of the word of God. We have to be careful with our words. Do you remember in the scriptures, it says, with our words we can curse and with our words we can bless. I think it should have said that. We have to be careful what we do. Don't get, don't stand on your tiptoes. With our words. Okay, we have to be careful. Okay. Um, Okay, I got a little bit ahead of myself. Look at number three above. Okay, it's, it says on the, under the commentary, on page three of the notes. By the way, if those of you who might be watching on YouTube in the near future and those watching on Facebook, if you'd like a copy of the notes, just send an email to uh, uh, Rabbi Elliot Haas at kolharua, K-O-L-H-A-R-U-A-C-H at gmail.com and I will send you a copy of the notes. Uh, okay, number three on page three. Okay, Bill Am is a story of a compromiser and what it means to be a compromiser. He listened to God and demons and prophesied for money. He was the psychic, the psychic he went to in his time. Okay, to be a compromiser here means you are a bringer of confusion, a burning away in a wasted life. This is one engulfed in darkness, meaning not of the people of God, a bringer of darkness, and this one can only receive the wrath of God. This is a perfect example of Satan. He comes like an angel of light. He is political and has good words, good words that deceive many. Look at 2 Corinthians 11:14. You know what? Just because someone whispers, we got money for you, doesn't mean they're a good guy. Okay? It means you're about to be deceived. As our president and thief in the White House, commander and thief in the White House. Okay, hopefully that won't remove, get me removed from Facebook. Facebook. Oh. Okay, uh, but anyhow, Second uh, Corinthians eleven fourteen. And no wonder, even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. He makes himself look so good, but he's so evil. Second Thessalonians two eight to fifteen. You know what? You need to fall in love with the Word of God. Amen. Amen. This is the only thing that's going to bring stability in the coming days. Amen. If you are not in love with the Word of God, you need to get on your face before God. Amen. You need to love this as much as you love feeling the presence of the Lord. Amen. Because this is loaded with, with what we are going to feed on in the coming days. 
Yeshua says those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And Yeshua said in, 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 uh, in John 17, no, John 17, uh, yeah, I think John 17, he said, your word is truth. John 7, I'm sorry, 1 Thessalonians 2, 8 to 15. Says, and then the lawless one will be revealed, whom Yehovah will slay with the breath of his mouth and bring to an end by the appearance of his coming. That is the one whose coming is accord with the activity of Satan, with all power and signs and false wonders, and with all deception of wickedness for those who perish, because they did not receive the love of of the truth, the word of God, so as to be saved. And for this reason, God will set upon them a deluding influence that they might believe what is false, in order that they all might be judged who did not believe the truth, but took pleasure in wickedness. Um, and, but we should always give thanks to God for you, brethren, beloved, by, by the Lord, because God has chosen you from the beginning, for salvation and for sanctification, through sanctification by the Spirit, and faith in the truth. What do you have faith in? You have faith in the Word of God. Spirit, you walk by the Spirit and you have faith in the Word of God. And it was for this, He called you through our gospel that you might gain the glory of our Lord Yeshua Mashiach. You want the glory? Then be in the Word. Get faith Amen. in the Word and, be, and walk in the Spirit. So then, brethren, stand firm and hold to, to the traditions which you are taught. What tradition? The Torah, the festivals, the calendar of God, the Sabbath, the new moon, whether by word of mouth or by letter from us. Okay? Okay, so, so you won't be deceived. Okay? Amen. So, so Bill Am was from a land of, of taking the word of God and abusing it and turning it into something else other than the word of God. The Antichrist is going to twist and pervert the word of God, the, the false Messiah. He is going to do that. Okay, He's going to be, And for those who are not in the word of God, they're going to be deceived. But we don't need that. We have Jesus. No. You have Jesus, yes, but you need the Word of God. Amen. The Word of God and Jesus. It says that. This is the faith of the saints in the great tribulation, those who have faith in Jesus and do the commandments of God. Twice it says that in the book of Revelation, talking about the great tribulation believers. You have to be balanced. Otherwise, the deception is going to come and you'll be swept away in the deception. The truth is what's going to set you free. Okay, so. Uh, I have more on the Kassam Rockets and all that here. And what it's made out of. But we're going to go on and start talking about the donkey now. Okay. Because God loves to make fools out of the foolish. Um, to reveal to them their foolishness. Okay. Chapter 22, 18 to 35. So we're in Numbers 22, beginning verse 18. We're going to go down. Actually, you know what? Let's let's read on from uh, from verse 8. I think I made a mistake. I think it's supposed to be 8, not 18, but that's okay. Let's read on from verse 8. He said to them. Spend here the night, and I shall respond to you with an answer. So they came, Balak came with his magical devices, his kasam, and he came and he, he was going to pay Bill, I'm going to offer him whatever he wanted to curse Israel. And this is how Bill Am answers. He said to them, Spend here the night, and I shall respond to you with an answer, as Yehovah <coughs> shall speak to me. Remember, this guy heard from God, but he also heard from demons, and he had no respecter of a God. He loved them all, including Jehovah, but I think he loved the other gods because it gave him fortune more. 
And because God does not share his glory with another. Amen. Amen. So I will respond to you with an answer as Yehovah shall speak to me. So they stayed. The officers of Moab did with Bilam. And God came to Bilam and said, Who are these men with you? And so God comes up to him and says, Who are these men with you? Said Bilam to God, Balak, son of Zippor, king of Moab, sent to me indeed the people who are coming out of Egypt. They have covered the face of the earth. Now go and curse for me then. Perhaps I will be able to make war against them and drive them out. But Elohim, God said to Bilam, You shall not go with them. You shall not curse the people, for blessed are they. Amen. <laughs> I am blessing them. Bilam got up in the morning and said to the officers of Balak, Bil Go to, to your land, for refuse has Yehovah to give you permission to go with you. <laughs> they got up, the officers of Moab did, and they came to Balak, and they said, Refuse has Bilam to go with us. Persist further, Dibalak, sending officers more and higher ranking than these. He wanted Bilam, only him, to curse the people. So he kept bringing the most higher officials with higher amounts of money. And boy, you know, Bilam loved money. Okay. So anyhow, verse 16, they came to Bilam and they said to him, So says Balak, son of Zippor, do not please refrain from going to me, for I will certainly honor you greatly, and everything that you say to me I shall do. So go, please, and curse for me this people. And Bilam answered and said to the servants of Bil Balak, If he were to give me Balak were, such as fills his house with silver and gold, I am not able to transgress the word of Jehovah my God to do anything small or great. Now, why do you think he said that? He says, listen, God doesn't want... God does not want to curse these people. But if you give me a house full of gold and silver, maybe I can curse them. In other words, you make me so rich that I don't have to deal with this again. Okay. So he was like an Arab in the Middle East, you know, we wanna I want to get something out of this. Okay. And and but he, so he pretends like he's gonna listen to God. Okay. Uh, and now Verse 19 of uh, Numbers 22. And now stay, please, here to you two for the night. Like the, these are the, the more official people from, from Balak, the king. And I will know what additionally Yehovah will speak with me. Elohim came to Bilam at night and said to him, To invite you, the men came, get up and go with them, but only the instruction or the words that I shall speak to you that shall you do. In other words, he knows Bilam. You're going to twist all my words because that is your nature. You're going to twist the words. So you better do what I say for you to do. You better speak what I say for you to speak. 21. Bilam got up in the morning and saddled his sheep down. Okay, now here's what Bilam thought. Okay, God saved for me to go. That means he wants me to go. That's what he thought in his head. I'm going to be rich. I'm going to have a house full of gold, a house full of silver, and God wants me to curse Israel because he's allowing me to go. So he gets overly enthusiastic, and he gets up in the morning, he saddles his sheep donkey, and goes off of the office of the Moab, and the anger of the Lord flared, of God flared, because he was going and stood there an angel of Yehovah in the road. And you know what it says? It says as an impediment to him. But you know what it says in Hebrew? Lid Satan lo. God stood like Satan in his path. Okay, literally. An angel stood in his path like Satan in the way. Okay. He was riding on a she donkey and the two attendants were with him. Verse 23, the she donkey... The aton, in Hebrew, by the way, the donkey means aton, okay? The angel of Jehovah standing in the road. So the donkey saw the angel of Jehovah standing in the road with his sword drawn in his hand. So turn away the, the donkey, the she donkey from the road, and it went into the field. A bill um, struck the she donkey to turn it back onto the road. 
Then stand did the angel of Jehovah in the path of the vineyards, a fence on this side and a fence on that side. The she donkey saw the angel of Jehovah and pressed against the wall and it pressed the leg of Bilam against the wall and he continued to strike, to strike the donkey. Continued did the angel of Jehovah to go ahead of him and stood in a place that was narrow, where there was no path to turn to right or left. The she donkey she donkey saw the angel of Jehovah and it squatted beneath Bilam, flared at the angle of anger of Bilam, and he struck the she donkey with a stick. Jehovah opened the mouth of the she donkey and it said to Bilam, What have I done to you? I'll just put it in the right way. What have I done to you? that you <laughs> struck me these three times. <laughs> Bilham said to the sheep donkey, because you made a mockery of me. Did he even realize he was talking to a donkey? I don't know. Okay. Bilham said to the sheep donkey, because you made a mockery of me. If only there were a sword in my hand, then now I would have killed you. The sheep donkey said to Bilham, <laughs> I'll probably not do it right. Am I not you, she that you have written upon me when you began until this day? Have I made it clear a practice to do to you such a thing? No, he said no. And Jehovah uncovered the eyes of Bilam, and he saw the angel of Jehovah standing on the road with his sword drawn in his hand. He bowed his head and prostrated himself on his face. Said to him that the angel of Jehovah, for what reason did you strike your she donkey these three times? Indeed, I went out to impede you, to become a Satan, for made crooked was the path against me. See me, did the she donkey, and it turned away before me these three times. Perhaps it turned away from me, since uh, otherwise, even now, you would, I would have killed you, but let it live. Oh, Bill Am said to the angel of Jehovah, I have sinned, for I did not know that you were standing to meet me on the road, and now, if it is evil in your eyes, I shall turn myself back. Say to the angel of Jehovah to Bill Am, Go with the men, but only the word that I shall speak to you, that shall you speak. Okay, now, how is God going to get these wicked people's attention? I think there's an ass coming to speak. Okay. That was Friday. Huh? The ass came up yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. We had one of them anyhow, right? <clears throat> now, this one is going to be one that does right. And it's going to mock the enemy. I'm not saying God's going to do this again. But I'm saying here, in a spiritual form, God is about to do this to the wicked. Okay. He's going to make an ass out of them. Amen. It's coming. He's going to make them look really ridiculous. Okay, so. Because God has the last left. He says it in Psalm 2. Okay. They mock him, but God's going to show up. Amen. And when he shows up, he's going to mock them. Amen. He's going to have the last left. He's going to have the last criticism. Amen. Okay, I guarantee it. We're going to be laughing and celebrating at what God does. Amen. Not at the destruction of the wicked, but at what God is doing. Amen. We are going to be out laughing and celebrating and rejoicing. Not rejoicing that destruction is coming upon wickedness, but wickedness is getting exposed and righteousness is winning. Amen. That's what God's about to do. God is about to show us off. That's why Bill said, well, I'll just go back. He said, no, no. I'm, I'm going to take the opportunity through you to mock further. To, to, to mock you further. And to mock Balak and the Moabites further. I'm not done with making a fool out of them. So you go with them. Okay. Amen. This is God. Listen, God does not change. Yeshua, Hamashiach. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, this is happening. Amen. Yes, Lord. And we are going to celebrate. Don't be afraid to celebrate. Amen. Last week, we were, 
<laughs> we were having a, a time on the east side. I was like, uh, I was seeing a cult the second night. I thought it was ours. Maybe it was ours. And everybody, and people were running outside, praising hallelujah. I don't know if it was the middle of the night. They were going, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. And the neighbors were, were saying, shut up, be quiet. We're going to call the police. <laughs> and they called the police. And the police came. Oh and the police started rejoicing and going into the glory and praising the Lord. There's nothing wrong here. We're, we are in his glory. Amen. I'm telling you, that's what's coming. God is going to have us. He's going to get the last laugh. And we are his people. We're going to laugh with him. We're just like that donkey. We're wise. As that donkey was wise. I'm not calling you all asses or anything, but I'm saying that they, they we're donkeys, okay? All right? That we are going to rejoice. Amen. Like God was, you know, do you, know, you believe that God was having a good time? You think Amen. it was like, yeah, he was angry. He sent a messenger, you know, an angel like uh, like the devil to stand in his, his in the face, Amen. you know, stand against him. Mm. But he also was having a good time. Amen. The Lord was mocking the enemy. Okay. All right. But he's saying, all because I want to show off my bride. Yes. All because I want to show her. Because God loves us. He loves Israel. Okay. The Hebrew word for the sheep donkey is the word aton. I have it here in your notes on page four. Okay, in the middle of page four. It literally means perpetual, constant, perennial, ever flowing, permanent, permanence. It's a very good name. Uh, aton, actually, its root word is etan. And actually, if you know the name of the seventh month, Tishri, the month that we celebrate all the fall festivals, it has another name. It's not called Tishri alone. It's also called Etanim, which means a, a perpetual forever. There's a there's a continuance that never ends. Okay, it means chieftain or head. Okay, it's it also means coast of a palm tree, which is a righteous person. Amen. And uh, you know, a man after God. Okay. Now, the, uh, the word for a male donkey is called a chamor, okay? And it really means flesh and boiling and trouble. But the female donkey carries a burden. The donkey bears burdens, and we're supposed to bear one another's burdens. So it's okay to be like a female donkey, in a sense. But we are a bride. We are supposed to carry one another's burdens, okay? In a sense, we are all like donkeys. You know, I'm not trying to insult anybody. I'm just letting you know. I consider myself like that too. That, that God would make me like that, where I can bear burdens with Him. Amen. We can do be a co-labor with our Messiah. Amen. Bear one another's burdens. Okay. The donkey, the the, the sheep donkey, is a good animal. Amen. I uh, maybe one day in the future I'll have a farm, maybe, and I'll have a, a sheep donkey there. I have never had any animals. I know that Linda does have horses, right? Did you ever have a donkey? No, I've wanted one. Huh? I've wanted one, but not. Yeah. But you know, it's like horses are like as donkeys aren't they a mixture of horses and the, and a mule. Huh? And a mule. And a mule. Thank you. So, you know, but they're they're really amazing. They're humble creatures and they bear burdens. They bear a lot of burdens. Yeshua came into Jerusalem on a donkey. Yeah. Yep. He's, it became a throne for him. The yeah. female he sat on, the male he, his feet were on. Like a throne of donkeys. Do you know that on the back of a donkey? You're going to have to talk real loud. Do you know on the back of a donkey it has a cross? Crucifix. I didn't know it that. Has a crucifix. the saying on the back of a donkey is like a cross. It, 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 there is a dark stripe this way and a really? dark stripe that way. There's a color of the hair. That's something we should look up sometime. That's something we should look up. Okay. All right. So, so let's look at where this donkey stood each time. Because the donkey was wise. That if God said that we just read here that God would have destroyed Bilam, but saved the donkey. Okay. Because the donkey was doing right. Okay. Where did the angel of God stand? 
in the path first. The word is in Hebrew is Devin. It's on the top of page five of your notes. He was standing on the road. Okay, and then and then Bilam struck the donkey the first time because he was driven into the field. Okay. The first place that we go is to the world. The believers of God who bear one another's burdens, the first place we go to when we're following God is to the world. To be a light for God in the earth. He said, you are not of the world, but you are in it. Okay, and then the path of the vineyards. He's driven to the path of the vineyards. Well, the vineyards, is it represents the ancient path. Okay, let's go back a little bit here. Okay, so... Uh, okay, so it says here that, you know, uh, Satan or the angel stood like Satan in front of Bilam, right? In front of, of the donkey, right? And the two attendants were with him. And she died. We saw the angel of Yehovah standing on the road, which is the derech, the path with his sword drawn in his hand to turn away the donkey from the road and it went into the field and then Bilam struck the donkey to turn it back onto a road. But it was not an ordinary road, it was a road that was contrary to God. Contrary to God. So God drives it into the field. Okay. And Bilam struck the sheep donkey to turn it back. And then it says here, then stand the angel of Jehovah in the path of the vineyards. That's where Kiramim, a fence on this side and a fence on that way, on that side. Okay, where was he put, brought to? A narrow place. Yeshua said, enter, strive to enter the narrow path. Few find the narrow path. They go to the wide path of destruction. Enter the narrow path. So the donkey was saved by going into a narrow path. And here it was, the vineyards, which is symbolic of the way of God. The, the ancient path of God, okay? A fence on this side, a fence on that. The she donkey saw the angel of Yehovah and pressed against the wall and it pressed its leg, the leg of Bilam against the wall. See, if you are going contrary to God, what's gonna happen? You're gonna be hurt by, you know, by being hit against the wall. The, the narrow path is a pathway between the troubles. Troubles on the left, troubles on the right. So Bilham, I mean the donkey pressed Bilham's leg against the trouble. Okay. Meanwhile, it was okay. All right. Except when it was hit, of course. Okay. Uh, continued that the angel of Yehovah to go ahead of him and stood in a place. Now this time it actually says narrow, where there was no path to turn right or left. Can you imagine? Here we go. Now an even more narrow path. When you walk with God, sometimes you look to the left and there's destruction. A thousand may fall at my left. And then you look to the right and 10,000 people are falling. But it will not come near you because you're on the right path. Amen. The narrow path. Okay? And the she donkey saw the angel of Jehovah and it squatted beneath Bilam. In other words, it just sat down and says, I'm not moving anymore. <laughs> so, he, so he struck it the third time. Okay. So I just want you to see, God is teaching the she-donkey. We need, to, we need to be like the she-donkey. And following God and going to the places that is not dangerous. By trusting in God and being led. God actually led him. The angel led him to that place because he knew the, the angel saw the, the donkey saw the angel and the donkey knew to stop, to pay attention. And then God opened Bilaam's eyes and he saw. Okay, so you know, that's that's pretty much the story. And I have the words for narrow, it's Tsar. Isn't this the season that we're in is called Ben Hansarim. Between the straits, between the troubles. Isn't it interesting that this portion is read every year at the season that means between the troubles? And here's Bill um, with his donkey who knows to be 
to be to live and trust between the troubles. Okay. So that means the test is: Will you behave? Will you listen to God? Will you will you be humble before God in the troubles? Because you will be safe, but it won't be safe for the one who's trying to who who is not accepting that he needs to be humble in the troubles. The arrogant and the prideful and the angry and the bitter, if you fall into any of those categories, you risk getting hurt really bad between the straits. Okay. Um, I pretty much explained everything um, everything on page six. Okay. And actually the beginning of page uh Page uh, seven. Okay. Okay. Now, how many times did Bill Allen actually now got to the place where God wanted him to go? So let's let's start from there. Okay. I'm gonna find the spot. Um, okay. Uh, we're in verse thirty-five. Say that the angel of Yehovah. Chapter 22, 35. Say to the angel of Yehovah to Bilam, go with the men, but only the word that I shall speak to you, that you shall speak. So Bilam went with the officers of Balak, and Balak heard, Balak heard that Bilam had come, so he went out to meet him in the city of Moab, which is on the border of Arnon, uh, which is at the edge of the border. Balak said, isn't that interesting? It's talking about a border. <laughs> Amen. Okay. <laughs> Balak said to Bilam, is it not so that I urgently sent to you to invite you? Why did you not go to me? In truth, am I not capable of honoring you? In other words, am I not capable of giving you wealth and riches? Bilam said to Balak, indeed I have come to you, but now do I have any ability to say anything? Whatever word that Jehovah Ye or Elohim actually puts in my mouth, that I shall speak. Bilam went with Balak and they came to Kiriath Huzot. Chuzot. Balak slaughtered cattle and sheep and sent to Bilam and to the officers who were with him. And it was in the morning, Balak took Bilam and brought him up to the heights of Baal. And he saw from there the edge of the people. Now we're in chapter 23, verse 1. Bilam said to Balak, build for me here. I think this thing's running out of, of power. Uh, Josh? Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to run out of power soon. So, anyhow. Uh, okay. uh, I forgot where it was at. <laughs> oh, we were at, at the beginning of the morning, right? Linda? Is Linda back there? Yeah. Bilam said to Balak, build for me here seven altars and prepare for me here seven bowls and seven rams. Balak, I'm running out of the He's in the bathroom. Bilam said to Balak, stand by near your burnt offering while I go. Perhaps Jehovah will happen to meet me. And, with, and the extent of what he shows me, I will tell you. He went alone. God happened upon Bilam, and he said to him, The seven altars I have prepared, and uh, I, I offered up a bull and a ram on each altar. Jehovah put a message in my mouth to Bilam, and he said, Go back to Balak, and thus you shall speak. And he went back to him, and indeed he was standing by near his burnt offering. He and all the officers of Moab, and he took up this parable, and he said, from Aram he led me, Balak, king of Moab, from the mountains of the east, go curse for me, Yaakov. Go bring anger upon Israel. How can I curse? Okay, when not cursing did God. How can I bring anger when not angry is God? For from the top of the rocks do I see it, from the hills do I observe it. Indeed, it is a nation that is alone, and will dwell among the nations, and it will not be reckoned. Okay, now, what I'm about to share with you, is prophecies concerning Israel and concerning you and I. This is prophecies 
that, that has yet to come in many cases. Okay? This is, this is the first prophecy. Look, I have the words for you in the notes. For from the top of the rocks do I see it, and from the hills I observe it. You know what also means the word I observe it? I behold him. Okay. Indeed, it is a nation that alone will dwell, and among the nations it will not be reckoned. May it die, my soul, the death of the upright, and may it be my end. Did I read the right one? Yeah. Okay. In other words, what, what did he see? This is a breakdown of the prophecy. God calls out the nation of Israel. God calls a people to himself. From beginning to the end, we are a holy nation. The anointed head, our Messiah, of the rocks is seen from above and seen from the lower places. They are a nation alone and not to be compared or among all the other nations. Now this is the part for you. Everyone joined to Israel through faith in Messiah is counted in this. John 18, 36. Let's look at that. So the prophecies of Bilam are in fact prophecies for us today. Because through Messiah, you have been joined to Israel in the Spirit. So let's find out. Yes, let's find out what God is saying. It's on the red right now. Okay. So, okay. So, um, so uh, John 18, 36. I know this is long. Bear with me. My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, Yeshua said that, uh, what was I at? John 18, 36. Okay, he said, Yeshua answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would be fighting that I might not be delivered up to, to the Yehudim, the, the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not of this realm. Okay, so this is the word was, it will not be reckoned among the nations. We, listen, you live in this world, but you never should compromise and be a part of this world. Amen. You are to be different. You are to be holy. You are to be separate. Problem is, most of the church does not know how to be separate. Amen. Because they've thrown away all the things that we're supposed to have to keep us separate right. from the world. The Hebrew scriptures, the times and the seasons of God and the calendar. These are the things that makes us different. That we follow the Shabbat with a whole heart, understanding the spiritual meaning, not just that we have a certain day that we separate, but understand what it represents. We are preaching and teaching the kingdom of God. Amen. Okay. That's the first prophecy. He said at the end of this first prophecy, Bill, um, may my end be like his, because it's very good. That's a very good end. So may my end be like his. Because you got to realize, you know, this is Bill. Um, he knows he, he's, he's dead. You know that? He knew he was dead. He worshiped all the other gods, but yet he believed. There's no doubt in my mind. He heard from God. And God told him, you know what? You're dead. If you don't have a relationship with me exclusively. Bill um, probably said, I'm not going to make that much money. <laughs> I, these, these other guys, you know, there, there's probably a, a lot of things he said. He heard from God, but he also heard from all the other guys. Mm -hmm. He heard from Satan, and of course, Satan always likes to say, "I'll give you this if you just reject this." Mm -hmm. Remember the tempting of Yeshua in the wilderness? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So let's go on, go on to the next prophecy. Okay, chapter 23, 21 to 24. So he goes to another place, sets up seven altars, offers up seven animals. Okay. Chapter 23, this is going to be 23, 13 to 20, 26, but we're going to look at 23, 21 to 24, which is the actual prophecy. Okay. So here's the prophecy. He did not perceive iniquity. Now iniquity is two steps past sin. It's really bad sin, okay? Uh, he did not perceive iniquity in Jacob or in Israel. And he did not see mischief in Israel. Jehovah, his God, is with him. And the friendship of a king is in him. It is God who brought him out of Egypt according to the strength and loftiness that are his. For there is no divination in Jacob, okay? And no sorcery in Israel. Even now it is said to Yaakov and to Israel what God has brought. Indeed, the people, like a lion club, cub, will get up. And like a lion, raise itself. And it will not lie down until it consumes prey and the blood of the slain it drinks. Balak said to Bilam, at least if a curse, you do not curse them. Then also a blessing, you shall not bless them. In other words, why do you keep blessing them? I'm telling you to curse them, but you keep blessing them. So let's look at this blessing. He did not perceive iniquity in Yaakov. Did Israel complain and argue and die in the wilderness for 38 years? Did Israel not just get into more trouble? And yet he says, I have not seen iniquity in Jacob. Amen. That's God's love for us. I'm showing her off. I'm seeing her end. But he's not just talking about Israel. He's talking about us. But joined to Israel through faith in Messiah, and he and he says through his blood, I perceive no iniquity in my in my girl, in my bride. There is no iniquity. Okay. And he did not see mischief in Israel. The word for mischief is a mal. It's a motto of page eight. Trouble. Okay. Travail. Grief. Iniquity. There's no mischief. Okay, and a friendship. You know what also that means in the Hebrew? The word is teruah. What do we blow on Rosh Hashanah? What do we blow on every Shabbat? The teruah. The... Is that correct? I think that's the right one, right? Yeah. Okay, I know it's not exactly right, but Josh. No, 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 that was it. Okay, but anyhow, basically God has removed all sin in Israel at the death of of the Passover lamb. Well, who is our Passover lamb? Yeshua. Jesus. God has removed all sin and every believer through the blood of Yeshua. We are now friends with the king. Amen. Our friendship of a king. Amen. And how are we friends with the king? It's through the shout. We are so excited and happy that he has saved us. We are like a shofar blast. That's what we go. The shout of a king. The friendship of a king. We have the friendship of Messiah. Okay. In, and it says it's in him. It's in Israel. It's in us. We have the friendship of a king inside of us. This is an amazing prophecy. This is well in advance. Jehovah looks upon Jacob and sees no iniquity, nor did he see any trouble in Israel. Even though in the wilderness journey there was nothing but trouble. Jehovah, his God, is with him, and a shout of the king is in him. In other words, in, inside of you, you better be shouting the Torah. Come on, let's all hear it. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. Just stand, just stand on Hallelujah, okay? Like, like an end, you start with Hallelujah, you know, Hallelujah, and just keep the Lele's going until the end. Okay? Come on, you can all do it. Try it. What does it matter what anybody thinks? Come on, let's try it. Those are not to try. Let's all do it. There you go. There you go. That's the friendship of a king in you. Amen. That's the power of the king in you. Okay. And then on top of that, he's 
After all that, he says, he brought them out of Egypt, out of bondage. Well, God, the Messiah, brought us out of bondage by his blood being shed on a cross. No Nachash in Yaakov. Look at what it says here. Uh, he says there is no sorcery that's the word consent there's no Kassan rockets among Israel okay <laughs> there, there, there's no divination you know what the word divination is? nachash there's no snake nachash is snake is flesh okay there is no snake with us we have put the snake under our feet. Yeshua did it. Okay, the serpent is under us. Okay, and, and no sorcery. The people will arise like a lion's cub. Remember that, that, that song that we sang? May the Lord come down like a lion. The, you know, may he come down and, and destroy the enemy. And that's, that's it. He will rise like a lion's cub and like a lion will raise itself up. It will not lie down. Until it consumes its prey and the blood of the slave it drinks. The prophecy is about Messiah on the cross in Israel at the beginning of the kingdom and, and in the Messianic kingdom. Zechariah 12 and 13 will fulfill this prophecy. John 15, 14 to 17. Let's look at that. John 15, 14 to 17. You are my friends. If you do what I, I instruct you, I command you, no longer do I call you slaves, for a slave does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain. And whatever you ask of my, the father in my name, he will give it to you. This I command you, that you love one another. And remember, if the world hates you, you know that it's hated me before it hated you. Okay, so this this is what God has inside of us. Okay, this is what God has placed inside of us. A lion, not a cute little lamb. Oh, but I have to be so nice to my neighbor. I have to love my enemy. You know, a part of loving is rebuke and correction. But at the same time, it's got to be done in love. Okay. Uh, but God is strong. And I think he's coming to a point where if you've been satisfied with sin, he ain't going to work with that anymore. Amen. We do not compromise with sin. No. He's not going to put up with that anymore. That's, that's what I'm getting from the Lord. Okay. So, no more compromising with the world. Okay. Next prophecy. This is the, the third one. Okay. I know I've been kind of long today, but we're getting there. Okay. Amen. Okay, uh, the third prophecy. He tries to curse him a third time. You think Balak would have given up? <laughs> he didn't give up. Okay, so here we are at uh, chapter 23, verse 27 to 24, 10. We're only going to look at, at uh, Numbers 24, 5 to 9. Okay, this is the final, uh, this is the second, I think, to the last prophecy. Now, before I read this, I want you to see what Bilham says. It's very amazing. Right before he gives this prophecy, he took up a parable and he said, Now this is Bilham. The words of Bilham, son of Beor. Like, look how great I am. The words of Bilham, son of Beor. The words of a man with a perceptive eye. He couldn't see, but the animals saw, right? He didn't have that much of a perceptive eye, did he? <laughs> he couldn't see the angel, but the, but the she donkey saw it. a man with a perceptive eye. The words of the one who hears the sayings of God, who the vision of Shaddai sees while falling, yet with uncovered eyes. Isn't that interesting? He says, My state is fallen. I've fallen. But even with uncovered eyes, I can see. Yet with uncovered eyes. I can see, though I'm not seeing in the spirit, but God has allowed me to see, even though I'm fallen. Okay? How goodly are your tents, O Yaakov. 
your dwelling places of Israel. This is why we did this prayer at the beginning. Uh, like brooks meandering, like gardens near a river, like aloes planted by Jehovah, like cedars near the water. Flow shall water from his buckets, and his seed shall be near waters that are abundant, exalted over Agag, Ag Agag, that's how you say it. <laughs> the, uh, exalted over Agag shall be his king, and upraised shall be his kingdom. It is God who brought him out of Egypt according to the strength. And the loftiness that are his, he will consume the nations that oppress him, and their bones he will crush, and his arrows shall pierce them. He crouched down, and he lied down like a lion and like a lion cub. Who can stand him up? Those who bless you are blessed, and those who curse you are accursed. Okay? Let's look at this. This is a, a very detailed. Okay? God will bring Israel to a place of rest. Physical land. There's a promise of a land of Eretz Yisrael and a future kingdom led by Messiah. He, we will rule and reign with Messiah. Now this is also speaking to us as believers. We will rule and reign with Messiah on a future earthly Jerusalem for a 1,000 year messianic kingdom. But we as believers are also looking for the new Jerusalem who builder and maker is God. Let's look at it. This is the prophecy. A prophecy of Israel resting in the kingdom, in the messianic kingdom. A prophecy of Messiah as king defeating Satan. Pictured here as Agag -Ag of Amalek. The crushing and piercing of every nation that oppressed Israel. The ruling with Messiah with a rod of iron as a lion. The reiteration of the covenant of blessing and cursing upon Israel. Okay, listen. I want to share this with you. When you become a believer in Messiah, you are grafted in. And it says it in Romans 11. Therefore, if someone curses Israel, they are cursing you. If someone blesses Israel, they are blessing you. And you need to think about that because there's a lot of people in the church that are caught up in anti-Semitism. Every time there's a war in Israel, and, and Israel has to defend itself by, by sending, by sending uh, and attacking the places where the Qassam rockets are, are lit off, then all the nations start going at, at the Jews and attacking the Jews. Listen, as believers, false theology, by, by false theology, Christians think they have a right to say we've replaced Israel, therefore God doesn't need Israel. And it's anti-Semitism. By the replacement theology. We cannot be like that because we are Israel. Israel, we are spiritual Israel. There is a physical promise too for Israel. There's a physical Israel that's going to join with spiritual Israel at the end. So there's a spiritual and it's a physical. And, and Paul goes into great length to explain this in Romans 11 that no one listens to. God is speaking through the Apostle Paul in Romans 11 and tells us, you better not be arrogant against the natural branches. For if they were cut off, what makes you think that you're not going to be? If you speak against and arrogance against the natural branches. There's a great danger for a lot of believers who get caught up in this false replacement theology okay so God is still holding up the blessing and cursing over Israel. I have a lot of scriptures here for you to look at, but I'm not going to look at them right now because we're running out of time okay now the next one, the final prophecy is in is in Numbers 24 11 to 25 uh, 24 I'm going to focus in on 24 17 to 24 okay so let's look at the final prophecy that he gives. I'm going to read a little bit before that because it's really cool. Uh, okay, this is what he says. But now, again, verse 16. Uh, no, actually, it's starting verse 14. And now, now, after all this, Bel Balak says, I'm not going to give you anything. <laughs> you, you've only blessed them. You haven't cursed them. I would rather you not even bless them, but you bless them, okay? So I'm not giving you anything. So, okay, you know what? I can't stop now. <laughs> so, 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 you know, on all the other times, Balak tried to use magical devices, but they wouldn't work. Okay? The Kassams, okay? <laughs> but this time he says, now, verse 14 of 24, indeed, I am going to my people come. I shall advise you what they will do, this people, the Jews, Israel, I mean, to your people at the end of days. 
So now I'm going to tell you what's going to happen at the very end. Okay. I'm going to make it worse for you. Sorry, but I have to. It says here, he took up his power and he said the words of Bill, um, son of Beor, the words of a man with the perceptive eye, there he goes praising himself, the words of the one who hears the sayings of God and the one who knows the knowledge of the Supreme One, who the vision of Shaddai sees the fall and yet with uncovered eyes. Here's the prophecy. I shall see it, but not now. I shall observe it, but it's not near. Issued has a star from Yahasot, and arisen has a scepter bearer from Israel. He shall pierce the nobles of Moab and demolish the walls of all the children of Seth. And it shall be, Edom shall be a conquest. And it shall be the conquest of Seir. Seir, his enemies in Israel will attain success. There shall rule one from Jacob and he will destroy the remnant of the city. He saw Amalek and he took up his power more and he said, first among the nations is Amalek, but its end will be eternal destruction. He saw the Canite, and he took up his power bone and said, Strong is your dwelling, and set in a rock is your nest. For if they should be laid waste, the Canite, until where can Assyria take you captive? He took up his power bone and he said, Oh, who will survive when he opposes these? Big ships from the coast of Katim will afflict Assyria and afflict the other bank, but also it will be forever destroyed. And then Bilam got up and went and returned to his place. And also Belak went on his way. Okay, so let's break this down as best as we can. Okay, look at how much is in here. We're on page 10 now. This, in Hebrews 1.8, the future coming of King Messiah Yeshua, Jesus, as a star, and his kingdom authority as a scepter bearer from Israel. Number two, King Messiah Yeshua pierces the nobles. Now this is the future when he comes back. The kingdom leadership authority of Moab. The feet of the idolatrous nations with their kings and princes. That is the idolatrous nations in the Middle East and in the whole world. He pierces, smites through. He, they pierced him, but he's going to pierce them when the kingdom comes. When he physically comes back to the earth. King Messiah, number three, Yeshua demolishes the walls of the children of Set. Set was the third son of Adam and Chava, or Adam and Eve, and represents the destruction of all the people on the face of the earth. Destruction of all nations in the day of the Lord. The children of Set is compensation. He comes with his compensation for the wicked. Number four, Israel's successful conquest of Edom and Seir. It's the defeat of Rome and its doctrines of Amen. hate that have filled the church. Amen. It's also the Islamic religion in all of its forms. The conquest of Edom and Seir are detailed throughout the Torah and the prophets. Yeshua. Let's look at that one. Um, it's in, I think, Isaiah 63. Who is this who comes from Edom with garments of glowing colors from Bosra? This one who is majestic in his apparel, marching in the greatness of his strength. It is I who speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Who's the one who saves? Yeshua. Who, why is your apparel red and your garments like the one who treads in the wine press? I have trod in the wine trough alone. And from the peoples there was no man with me. I trod them in my anger and trampled them in my wrath. And their lifeblood is sprinkled on my garments, and I stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance was in my heart, and my year of redemption has come. And I looked, and there was no help, and I was astonished, and there was no one to uphold. So my own arm brought salvation to me, and my wrath upheld me, and I trod down the peoples in my anger, and made them drunk in my wrath, and I poured out their lifeblood on the earth. This is Messiah when he comes back. You think he's coming like a lamb here? He's coming like a lion. Amen. And it's and it's all there in the last prophecy of Bill Up. In, in number four. Okay. The the remnants. The King Messiah in, in number five on page ten in your notes. King Messiah is you with defeating all the remnants. I just read that to you. Of the city of Seir. So it's the actually number four and five is really in that in that chapter, Isaiah 63. Okay. Uh, number six, King Messiah, eternal destruction on Amalek. Amalek, Amalek was a grandson of Esau, 
who is also called Edom and Rome. Rome comes from Esau, the brother of Jacob. But think about that. The, this is this destruction upon Amalek is really the defeat of Satan himself and his power. Amen. Okay, in number seven, it talks about the ships of Kittim. This is Greece. Greece will defeat Assyria. This actually may be referring to the Greeks defeating the Persians long ago under Alexander, or Rome defeating the Greeks long ago. But this is mainly about the future when Islam is defeated and destroyed. Listen, Amen. I have nothing, I have no problem with the Arab people. But their religion is the religion of Satan, hell. Okay, so just letting you know that this is the religion that God is going to destroy. Okay. All right. Um, okay, now, in, in Numbers 25, 1-9, I'm just going to give you an overall view of this here. The treachery of Bilam. Moab, immorality, and idolatry. Let's look at that. We need to look at these scriptures and then I'll close. Numbers 31, 15, and 16, the end of this. Numbers 31, 15, actually, it's not the end of this portion, it's the end of the next week's portion, but we're going to go to it. Numbers 31, <coughs> actually, maybe further. It's actually a couple of portions from now. Numbers 31, 15, and 16. This is what it says. Say to them, did Moses, did you let live every female? They themselves were the cause of the children of Israel by the word of Bilam to commit a betrayal against God in the matter of Peor. And there occurred the plague in the assembly of Jehovah. Okay, now let me tell you what happened. Um, Bilam couldn't curse Israel, right? But he still wanted the money. So what he did was, I have an idea of a lot. Have a bunch of Midianite women dance naked. They're all gonna be idolaters. And the men of Israel will get caught up in that, and the women will take them to their gods, to worship their gods. And when they did that, a plague broke out against Israel. So Bilam counseled Balak and still received his gold and silver. And, and and it brought a plague upon Israel, which is going to lead us into next week's portion. But let's look at what happened real quick, because we really do, we really need to get this. Uh, we got to look at chapter 25. We'll start. Let's just read chapter 25, and you'll get why we're going to read some of these other last scriptures. Israel camped in the Shittim, and and the people began to stray immorally with the daughters of Moab. They invited the people to the feasts of their gods. The people ate and prostrated themselves to their gods. Israel became attached to Baal Peor and flared up at the anger of Yehovah against Israel. And Yehovah said to Moses, take all the leaders of the people and they should hang them unto Yehovah in front of the sun to the withdrawal of the flaring anger of Yehovah from Israel. Moshe said to the judges of Israel, let each man kill his men who were attached to Baal Peor. And suddenly a man of the children of Israel came and brought near to his brothers a Midianite woman before the eyes of Moses and before the eyes of the entire assembly of the children of Israel. And they were weeping at the entrance of the tent of meeting. That's the tabernacle. And he saw Pinchas. I know it says Phineas in your Bible, but it's, his name is Pinchas. Son of Eleazar, son of Aaron, the Cohen, Saul, and he got up from the midst of the assembly and took a spear in his hand. He came after the man of Israel into the tent and impaled them both, the man of Israel and the woman, into her stomach, and halted was the plague from upon the children of Israel. And they were those who died in the plague, four and twenty-four. Twenty-four thousand Israelites died because of the deception of Bilam to Balak. Okay, so I share with you one of the scriptures. Now look at 2 Peter 2, 15 to 16. So after all that, and God was showing off his bride, the Bill, Bill I'm figuring out a way to deceive Israel. Okay, through lust. Peter? 2 Peter 15 and 16. No, I'm sorry, 2. 2 Peter 2, 15 and 16. Forsaking the right way, 
They have gone astray, haven't followed the way of Bilhah, the son of Aor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. And he received a rebuke uh, for his own transgression, for a dumb donkey, speaking with the voice of a man, restrained the madness of the prophet. Um, so, again, it's talking about Bilhah. Okay, now look at Jude, chapter 1, verse 11. It's right before the book of Revelation. Jude, there's only one chapter, verse 11. Woe to them that have gone away of Cain and for pay they have rushed headlong into the error of Balaam, Bilam, and perished in the rebellion of Korah. In other words, all these are comparing the evils of what he did and his deception, Bilam. Okay, and the final one is in the book of Revelation, chapter 2, 14. He's speaking to the congregation of Pergamos. Book of Revelation 2, 14, and he says this. I have a few things against you. He's speaking to the church of Pergamum. Because you have there some who hold to the teaching of Bilam, who kept teaching Balak and to put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel to eat things, sacrifice to idols, and to commit acts of immorality. Okay, so Pergamos was guilty of this. Okay, the, when, when you can't be defeated because of the righteousness of God upon you, watch out for lust. Watch out for, uh, for pride. Beware of pride and lust in the coming days. Because the, Lord, the glory of the Lord is going to be so great on you that there will be a temptation to take credit for it. Watch out. Lust will be put before you. Watch out. Okay. Now, how does this Torah, now actually, in a sense here, we talked about Pinchas. He stopped it by putting a spear. You ready to be a Pinchas? Get your spear ready. Amen. Okay. But it might be through you, you have to put it. I don't know. Okay, but anyhow, be a Pinchas. What does the Torah speak to us prophetically about today regarding the coming glory? I think I already shared that with you. We can't be manipulated to compromise with a reward or personal monetary gain. Bill of new God, but as a pagan idolater who practiced witchcraft. Okay, when God's glory comes, no one else will take the glory or credit for the, for the glory. When the harvest, healing, signs, wonders, and miracles begin, God will expose them and bring his justice upon them. Those who practice idolatry, those who choose evil, will have a recompense and exposure upon them and they will be dealt with by God's judgment. But for you and me, humility, brokenness, God is going to pour his glory out. Okay? And you get nothing out of it except to be in his presence and love him and rejoice that you can be a humble servant for him in this time. Get ready because it's soon approaching. Okay, it's coming. Amen. It's it's far sooner than even last week. Amen. Okay, I I don't I'm not going to give you a date, but some prophets are saying July 4th, but others are saying August. So let's just say let's just wait and see. But keep pressing on. Don't give in to lust. Don't give in to pride. Don't give in to idolatry. Don't give in to the world. Be different. Follow His commandments. Follow Him. Know His word. Love him. He doesn't ask much. He says, just love me. I have such a reward you cannot come to repent. Just love me. It's simple. I want your love. I want your songs. I want your worship. I want your adoration. I want your praise. I can't get enough of you. Make me happy. That's what God's saying. Make me happy. And all you have to do is praise him. And you know what? I do it joyfully. It's like, I'm going to fill you up. I keep, yeah, oh, praise is going. Yeah, keep going. That's a, more glory. More glory. Yeah. You keep praising me? More glory. Here, yeah. I'm going to, here, here, take that. Ooh, whoa. Okay, here it is. It's an interaction. It's intimacy between us and the Lord. Yeah. Yes. Can you read the Micah 6 8? Okay. Uh, Micah 6 8. I always have a hard time finding the smaller prophets. Like I have 
hard time following uh, or finding uh, New Testament <coughs> short letters. Okay, Micah 6 8, you said? Yeah. Micah 6 8 says, Who has told you, O oh man, what is good? And what does Jehovah require of you? But to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Oh, yes. Amen. Um, Abba, I ask, Lord, you just seal this inside of us, Lord. Help us, Lord, because it's, it's so easy to get angry, Lord, today. It's so easy to to want to complain, Abba. To, to be dissatisfied, Abba. It's so hot, sometimes we forget, Lord, because it's too much for our flesh, Abba. I ask that you would send forth the cloud, Lord, of your glory, Lord. So like Israel, they were kept cool in the heat. Uh, but, and, when, and when it was winter, they were kept warm by the fire of your presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we love you, Lord. And we know, Lord, you love us more than we could possibly know, Lord. Uh, but we just want to have an experience with you. It's not just that we, we love your word, but we even more love your presence. And your, and your glory, Abba. We want to see you honored and adored. We want to see all nations bow to you. We want to see every tongue confess. And everyone say, Yeshua HaMashiach is Lord. Abba. I ask, Lord, that you would just seal us inside of us and get us ready and make us strong so that we'll be like lions, Lord. Abba, the lion and the shout of a king is inside of us, and he is our friend. Hallelujah. Jehovah bless you and keep you. Jehovah lift up his countenance, countenance upon you and be gracious to you. Jehovah lift up his face upon you and give you peace. In the name of our Sar Shalom, our Prince of Peace, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, the Lord of all, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the Word of God, the, the olive and the tav, who will set his throne in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The closing blessing for the Torah. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the Torah of the truth and has planted an eternal life in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of our Torah. Before you shut it off, Josh, and, and, and if any of you need prayer, you know, and I, I mean, I'll anoint you and pray for you, and we'll see if God will do something. I believe. Let's when we get in a circle, let's pray. And for all of you online, if you need prayer about anything, send a message, either through the YouTube when you get on there, or through a Facebook, and we'll we'll lift it up in prayer. In the name of Yeshua. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.